Hello and welcome to Seagull Social Season 2, Episode 8. I'm your host, Maz, and of course I'm joined by eight, my right? regular host. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's read eight. the title. Let us know episode 8. Um, of course, I'm joined by Ben and Ryan, and of course, we are joined by the legend himself. I say that at every intro, but he actually is a bright legend. The yeah, legend. A legend. And and Mr. Amex, uh, Will Buckley. How are you doing, Will? You all good? Yeah, all good. I don't mind being called a legend, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> what well, well, Mr. Amex? That's quite a good yeah, one, isn't it? I'll give you Mr. Amex. I thought that was quite a, quite a nice title. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I've not heard that one before, actually. Take that out. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> before we get into this, I need to bring this up, right? I found this shirt earlier, 2011-12 shirt, which I got signed by pretty much the whole team at the time. That was a at good the bottom, one, Will. Shirt, at the bottom, mate. There, there you are. Will there Buckley, number 30. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. I'm real. Right. So, yeah. Love it. Was that was that, you had Ujoa as well, wasn't it, Ryan? On, on there, Ujoa. Yeah, Ujoa, Ashley Barnes. I think I don't even know. I think I got what it team? signed over two seasons, and yeah, it's, yeah, that was a um, good squad. That one, to be fair, very good yeah. players on that. <laughs> Pure childhood yeah, memories, right there. Whilst we're on sentimentals, <laughs> here, here's me and you in 2012 as well. Probably, probably the day, probably the day <laughs> yeah, you done that Facebook that. post. <laughs> that don't look like you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> he's, he's got ugly, already, Will. He's got ugly. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> right uh, well, well, well we'll kick off um of course if you don't mind we're just going to discuss um so sort of what what brighton uh is like at the moment so just just quickly uh, what are your thoughts been on the brighton for brighton the season so far and just like the progression from when you obviously at the club it's changed a lot hasn't it um and yeah just, yeah. just be good to get a bit of insight um <laughs> from your on that yeah i think obviously i think graham potter had a bit of bit of a rough start didn't he i think there was a lot of questions about him whether he was the right man which always seems to be done it when there's there's a new manager. Um, but he he's kind of proved everyone not wrong in a way because I think you know experienced football people knew he was going to end up being the right man. Um, mm. But yeah, he's just kind of showed this season with the start that we've had. He's just he's been unbelievable, hasn't he? So I think like you say, there's they've trialed different managers over these last probably seven or eight years since I left, and they seem to have found the right one now in in Graham Potter. Uh, what do you think, like, with Potter, um, well, you know, as fans, we've got a lot of opinions on him and, you know, what he brings, but what, what do you think he brings different to, say, like a Gus Poye or an Oscar Garcia or, you know, even, a, you know, Sammy Hoopia, uh, dare I say. Uh, yeah. What do you think is like, the big difference with Graham Potter? I think I think his man management looks unbelievable, to be honest. I think everyone everyone in the squad, I mean, the he squad's so him. strong just... now. Um, mm. And I think... He's keeping everybody happy. Even the players who are not playing seem to be buying into what he's doing. And I think that's a massive part of it. You don't want players sulking or anything like that if they're left out. So I think his man management seems seems one of the best around. And then obviously he's just he's just brought so many different tactical ideas to Brighton um, that he seems to have worked on over the years as well, which is, again, another thing that's standing out, I think. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Um, it, yeah, it's it's always interesting to hear someone from like an an outer perspective on, on Potter because obviously he's a, he's a much sort of after obviously with the whole Newcastle takeover now he's been linked Gee, with, with oh, Newcastle. Yeah. As well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he's de- he, yeah he's definitely hot mm. property uh, in the scene. And of course, Should we um, ask you about that. Yeah, go, yeah. go on, Ben. As a, as ex Sunderland, so what do you yeah. think of the Geordie boys getting taken over? And from a play, ex player's perspective, mm. how will that affect Brighton or players around? What other players in the Premier League? Yeah, what are your thoughts on it? The takeover. I think it's you know what I think it's a good thing. I think if any any club that's not in that kind of the big top six gets big investment, it's just, it's just going to make the the league more competitive, isn't it? So mm. I think it's a massive thing, and we'll see how much people are willing to move just for the money, won't we? Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> I'm worried for a couple because, of our players, definitely. Yeah, I think you know what with the Graham Potter one, it doesn't strike me the kind of manager who would kind of just go for that. It seems like he's got a plan set in place for long term and obviously he's building some at Brighton. I, I can't see him leaving. Um, Players-wise, it's a shorter career. So, you know, if, if a lucrative offer comes for a, for a big player, you know, there's going to be a decision to be made for him. So we'll see. We'll see. Time will tell really, won't it? Would you have made the switch, Will, if, if uh, Newcastle approached you, uh, <laughs> going to Newcastle? <laughs> would you go for the well, match? T- to be fair, obviously, I used to support Newcastle when I was younger. Um, oh, really? But th- yeah, but then I went to, obviously, Sunderland. But I thought, <laughs> I, bet, I better keep that one quiet because I've seen <laughs> how some of the players have, have had it. Yeah. So I don't think it ever kind of got off the ground that I was a Newcastle fan. So obviously, so we yeah, got an exclusive I, I, there. Oh, yeah, 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 the cat's, <laughs> the cat's out the bag. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, we had a bit of technical uh, difficulties, but we just found Shock out. Shock me uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Shock it was right. Um, however, however, we just we did just find out a bit a bit of an exclusive on Seagull Social here uh, that Will uh, is actually a, a Newcastle fan. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Will, you just explained how um, yeah you were you were well you're a Newcastle fan at a Sunderland. So yeah, what what was that like? Yeah, like I said, I kept it I kept it very quiet. I don't think. I don't think the bulk of the Sunderland fans found out. I don't know if anybody found out, actually, because I thought, if that gets wow. out, I'll be getting booed off my own fans. So <laughs> yeah. I think um, Danny Graham obviously signed for Sunderland as well, and it was quite quite uh, big that he was a Newcastle fan. I think I think it was like a couple of days before he signed, he was getting booed by the Sunderland fans. It's like, you're going to be signing him tomorrow oh, right. or something. It's like, I can't be going through that. I mean, <laughs> Will was part of the crowd booing him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, that's Tender. why I just thought I've got to keep that quiet. I can't be getting stick off my own fans as well as other fans as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not nice. ideal, is it? No, it's not ideal. Um, so just just going back to sort of doing a bit of a rewind uh, back to your early career. Um, so you started off a, a League Two with Rochdale, um, and then you yeah. quickly made the step up to the Championship with Watford, and then obviously uh, after with us. Um, what was that yeah. transition like? You know, the step up from going from League Two football to Championship. What what was that like? Yeah, that was massive, really. That was probably the biggest step um, of my career, really, at that age as well. And probably for the first first couple of months, I just thought, I'm not going to be able to play at this level. The, the transition was just the speed of the of the championship compared to League Two was just something I'd never seen before. And um, yeah, just in, even in training, it was like the players were seeing passes that I'd not seen players in at League Two level C before, and you're getting caught out of position and stuff like that. So, I think it took me a good, a good couple of months before I felt comfortable and thought, you know, I can really play at this level. So, yeah, it was definitely a big step that. Yeah, and what, what, what do you think? It was your obviously we all know your speed is your, you know, probably your your one of your best attributes. Do you think that that really contributed to to making that transition? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously, I mean, any modern day player now, if you're not at a certain level of speed, you're going to struggle, aren't you? But mm. obviously, I was at, at that age as well. I was, yeah, probably one of the quickest, even just arriving there at Watford. So I think you get away with it a little bit. Um, if you're not as fast, you have to be a bit a bit faster in the mind, don't you? So mm. I think yeah, it helped me that I was obviously quick, and that obviously helped with the transition. But you've got to be. Just you've just got to be so clued in into the game and stuff like that when you make them, you know, the jumps to the next level. So mm. I think it, it did take a while, but yeah, I got there in the end. I remember. Um, I think I, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is right. First time I saw you play was when we played you in the FA Cup, and you were at Watford at the time, I believe. Yeah, that, yeah, I remember. That yeah, game, yeah. I, I'm pretty, I remember seeing you play. I think was that the first time you kind of took notice of uh, the Brighton side and thought, oh, that could be a club that I might want to join one day or was that just like this is just any standard opposition because I think no, we beat no, you that, that day didn't we we're not we knocked you out right yeah I don't After know the FA Cup. Or I can't remember yeah, yeah but um yeah that was uh, obviously at Watford at Vicarage Road and mm. that was kind of obviously the way Gus kind of transformed Brighton from the way he was and when we was playing against it it was like he was passing it about from the back and that that was kind of unheard of then which sounds weird now for a league um, one team when we, when we yeah. were then as well. Yeah, and it was it was just so hard to play against. I remember just just running, just sprinting to to Marcus at left back painter, then running after the goalkeeper. Then in, I don't can't remember who's in net, but they chip it over my head, and I'd be running back, and I'm thinking <laughs> they're taking so many risks, but I'm getting so tired here. When I get the ball, yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be goosed. Mm-hmm. But so um, that was kind of yeah the, the first time I seen what Brighton was doing, kind of first stand. I think there was obviously talk about it, you know, Gus kind of transforming what was going on down there. Yeah. But yeah, to play against it was, you kind of think, oh, I'm going to get a lot of chances here because it's a bit risky at the back. But honestly, the, the, the way they'd been trained and was improving every game, we, I, honestly, we, we couldn't get near them. And obviously, Brighton won that day and yeah. showed Brighton really up the, the difference in... Even you know, even though we was the the higher league team, we we got passed off the pitch. Do you reckon you underestimated the club, or did you? Or was the manager? I don't know who your manager was at the time. Sorry, uh, but did yeah. they kind of maybe that made you guys aware that these guys pass it around the back, don't take them for granted. Yeah, well, obviously it was just kind of more of they take a lot of risks, and that was kind of it seemed back then it was like oh it's too risky to play out from the back and stuff like that but kind of playing against it it's not nice you'd rather them just launch it because then you can just kind of jog back and get in position mm. when you're sprinting about after the ball for 10 minutes um you get tired do you know what i mean so it's we was aware of it but probably not 
wasn't aware of how good Brighton was at doing it for you know for a League One team. It's really interesting because you reckon that Gus was a bit ahead of his time then at the time because obviously he came in what two thousand nine right to us, so it was quite new to pretty much anyone in League One and particularly in the Championship where it really started getting noticed a bit more. Was he probably yeah. a bit of ahead of his a bit ahead of his time maybe you know was he. As influential, because we speak to quite a few of the, you know, that sort of era players, and they always say that Gus is one yeah. of the most, if not the most, like influential play, uh, managers they've ever worked <clears throat> under. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I think that's why, why Brighton did so well at them early stages when you know when he took over and got promoted and stuff like that. I think it was just something so different and and advanced to what every what everybody else was doing. It kind of took teams by surprise. I think. Mm. Um, and yeah, I I'd never um in sorry seen anything like that. Um, when I went to Brighton, I was like, you know, what's going on here? This this is completely alien to me. I've never seen football. See the Scottish like centre back spraying balls around. You think how's Gordon Greer doing <laughs> yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think I think luckily I don't know whether Gus made them players better or whether he was just able to do what he wanted them to mm, do, but. Yeah. He was also good, you know. Even Gordon was so good on the ball. Dunkey yeah. was probably just more natural, naturally good for a centre half on the ball. Uh, Marcus Painter, you probably wouldn't say he's a great footballer, but he just got it straight away, and he was, you know, an important kind of player to the team. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it, was, it was it was mad, really. Yeah, Painter. If you're would listening, you say sorry, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marcus Painter is the captain like that. <laughs> he's <laughs> punching the air right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Paints um, was honest. Paints was Gus loved Paints, and he was proper kind of valuable to the team. You know, like some fans don't kind of see the value of certain players, do they? And they can be a bit kind of under the radar. But Paints was one of them where he'd be he'd be playing every week because he was he was brilliant on the ball. He'd never lose it. He was so reliable at left back. Yeah. So would you say then with Potter? Uh, sorry, not Potter. Poye. Uh, would you say that he's probably? Mm. If he is the best you've worked, would you say he's the best you've worked under? First of all, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yes. He's, and for my career as well, he was he was massive as well. But yeah, definitely the best the best manager I've played under. Yeah, yeah, because then obviously you link back up with him at Sunderland. Would you say you preferred mm. working under him here, or would you say you preferred working him there? You know, what was was there a big difference in either way? You know, what was what was it like? I think I think he was. He probably knew that he didn't have the time to kind of get things the way he wanted to, to at Sunderland. So I think he kind of accepted that he might he might have to change the way he wants things doing as well a little bit on the pitch to, to maybe get results instead of kind of trying to build something like he had the time at Brighton. So definitely it was better at, Bright, um, at Brighton, yeah. Um, and I think he felt a lot more comfortable at Brighton where, you know, everybody kind of loved him and looked up to him and he was kind of the main man and... He, he knew that as well, so I think he had. He always he could always be a bit more relaxed about what he was doing. Um, whereas at Sunderland, I mean, if you lose one or two games on the balance up there, you, you, you know they're trying to get him out straight head. away. Yeah. So yeah, so could you was, sense he, a difference in his personality? Was he trying to portray something else potentially to a new squad that he had, or was he still the yeah. same bloke that you saw? At he, your time I think at he, yeah, I think he tried to be the same, but when the players are not doing it or you're coming up against better teams and it's not working, you kind of have to change. And I think he kind of did change his philosophy um, up at Sunderland and obviously it didn't work out in the end. Mm. I think, he, I mean, he had a good time there probably. I don't know how long he was there, 18 months or something. For the first year mm. he, he did really well, but you just don't get that time at Sunderland. Managers don't don't last very long if you, if you lose a few games, and that was that was one of the problems, really. That's actually like a bit the of a side, of the, of yeah, a bit <laughs> of a side note to that. Yeah. So what, do you think with a manager yeah. you'd you'd rather work under someone that's going to get the time, you know, rather than have someone that's you know you, you're a top and change sort of club at Watford now? It's literally you get five managers a year mm. without fail. I mean. Yeah, Troy Deeney's a, player, and a lot of managers, quite... isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, for a player, it must be quite unsettling, yeah. surely, because you know, if you're working under five managers a, a year, surely you can't play to your best. I mean, I don't get, I don't get that to me. I yeah. don't get it. Yeah, well, there's got to be obviously changes in what the manager wants you to do as well. So it's got to be yeah. unsettling as a player, um, and you kind of build up relationships with managers as a player, and you know, you kind of know the manager likes you or not and what he wants from you and if you're in his kind of starting 11 and that can be that can make you a bit more relaxed going onto the pitch as well knowing 
you know, I'm not a mistake away from being dropped or something like that. So mm. I think it can massively have an effect, yeah. Um, but it is weird because uh, Watford seems to have done quite well using that. So that's probably why yeah. they keep they kind of keep doing yeah. it. Um, but maybe it'll maybe it'll catch them out sooner or later. I'm not too sure. Mm. Yeah. Go on, ben. Yeah, so um, obviously, yeah, go, going into the, your time at Brighton as well, um, did you go, go into the club with added pressure? Um, as Obviously, at the time, you are a record signing for a million. Um, so yeah. at the time, obviously, that's quite a big sum, which when, when now you look at look at it now, it's like, what is a million? But yeah. obviously, at the time, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but obviously at the time, of course, um, um, you know, it, was, it was a it's lot huge. of money and uh, yeah, it's huge. So was, was that an added pressure? Did you feel like you had a lot on your shoulders or did you, were you just like, well, no, I, I know my game. I, I'm going to come in yeah. and just, just smash it. You know what? I don't know. I've been asked that quite a few, quite a few times, and no, I didn't feel any pressure. But I always laugh because I think it might have took the pressure off me because they signed Mikhail Smith about two days later, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say. Yeah. So I didn't. Have the, I didn't. I wasn't the record signing for long. So <laughs> I think. But no, even when even when I went, I was never thinking about that. Um, mm. I don't know if it's when you're younger, you just don't think about them things. And I was just kind of excited to obviously play at the Amex, and it was just. Mm an unbelievable time for me in my career, uh, w- looking forward to what, what I had to come, really. So I, I no, literally never even thought about that. But, yeah, thanks, Maka, for taking a picture. <laughs> can, you talk about, can you talk about the journey of the transfer? So, like, when did you first hear interest? Like, was that during the season, like, the end of the end of your season at Watford? Or was it literally, like, a few days? Yeah. Interest no, yeah, it just, yeah, it just came dead quick. Um, it wasn't any talk. I'd, I wasn't expecting to move. Um I mean, I'd, I'd had a decent season at Watford, maybe because I was young, like, it kind of makes it look like you've had a better season than you probably have had. And mm-hmm. people can see your potential, I suppose. But, yeah, I wasn't expecting it. And it just kind of... I think the Watford did turn down one or two bids before they accepted. But I think it was done quite quickly, within probably a week or two. Um, so not wasn't... quite Danny Ings, then, at Villa. <laughs> Danny, oh, no. Danny Ings to Villa was like, <laughs> within a day, wasn't it? And it came out of nowhere. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, it was. It was to be fair. It was similar though because there was no no talk about it, um, mm. which was then the opposite. Obviously, when I was leaving, there was obviously mm. it was kind of going on for ages. Um, so that can obviously kind of put you off kind of your mm. game, I suppose, and what you're doing and what you're concentrating on. But luckily, yeah, it was it was it was done quite quick. And I mean, as soon as I heard Brighton were interested, I was you know my mind was kind of made up and what they was doing and stuff like that. So it was. Mm. I was glad, really, it was done. It was done quickly. Yeah. Right. From a from a player's perspective, with a transfer, you know, would you prefer it to be kept under wraps, or do you quite like the rumours bubbling? You know, where's Will Buckley going to go? Is he going to go to Sunlit? You know, <laughs> the sun. do you prefer that? <laughs> yeah. Do you prefer a bit of interest, a bit of excitement, or do you, do you prefer it just to be kept completely quiet, get on with it, Danny Ings style, and just completely in and out? Yeah, I don't know really. I, I mean, I think when it gets yeah, when it gets out, I think it's more for to get other clubs interested, to make other clubs aware. And it's probably, yeah. you know, probably better for the selling club if it does get out because then they can kind of barter with other clubs Capitalize and make other well. clubs aware and stuff. But I don't think you really take that much notice of it as a player. I think really? you know, obviously, you speak you speak to your agent and then you'll know what's really happening um, rather than obviously reading the papers and stuff like that, which a lot of the time are probably false kind of false claims. So. We had that with Edouard this summer. Like, it was every single, like, journalist, Celtic journalist, the, the really trusted ones as well, were saying he's Brighton, he's going to go to Brighton. And then it kind of dust settled there and then he all of a sudden joined Crystal Palace. So, like, yeah. Yeah, there was obviously there was obviously no real truth behind it, even though the, the journalists that Celtic fans trust were obviously maybe getting told something different by the agent, maybe, just to make sure, yeah. make other clubs aware that he was available, potentially. Yeah, I think it can, it can be a bit of mind games as well and just kind of making making it look bigger than probably what it is and more clubs interested than probably... There's usually probably only one or two. It's out of one or two usually if, if someone's going to try and buy you, unless you're obviously you're, you're a superstar and there's 10 clubs that want you. But there's usually one or two clubs that have been watching you for a while and then mm. obviously make a decision to, to put a bid in. Now, speaking of superstars, um, so you've, you, joined <laughs> Brighton. <laughs> you joined Brighton at this point. Um, you see Lewis Dunk, quality player, obviously now especially... Could you yeah. tell then, or when could you tell, if you did tell at all, when he that he was going to be Brighton's one of Brighton's greatest ever players? Was that something that you saw in him quite early? Um, on? I don't think you could have could have predicted the way the way he's gone on now. Um, but you could tell, obviously, he had that quality. He just had natural quality on the ball. 
Um, yeah, and obviously when he came into the team as a young player, he, he performed most of the time. So I think you could see he was going to have a good career, but he's kind of gone on to to do amazing things, hasn't he? But mm. yeah, you could see, I think he, he matured though. Obviously after I left, he seems to have matured a lot um, and kind of really got his head down and and kind of understand what he needs to do and what he needed to do to get to the level he's at now. And he's obviously dedicated his life to to get there, I think. I think that's quite clear to see. Was he a leader quite early on as well at the, at the time when you joined or did he kind of progress into that maybe after you left? Or Yeah, or I think that come, like? after, yeah, that come after that. He, he was kind of just a young lad really coming in and, you know, I've, not having a laugh, but, you know, just not really thinking about it too seriously. And I think to really go on to be captain and I think you've got to kind of change the way you are around the training ground and kind of outside of football as well. You've got to portray yourself as a, as a leader all the time. So, you no, know, he wasn't like that, but he, he definitely turned into that now, I think. Mm. No, no, definitely. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's always interesting to hear about, about Dunk because obviously his his progression has been, like, you know, as Brighton fans, we've seen him go from the with Dean days um, all mm. the way through to, you know, being this, you know, club legend and, and captain leader. A bit, bit, you know, a bit of a Brighton's gone Terry, I suppose. Well. Yeah, yeah, England cap. Yeah, yeah so um, yeah, it's just it's always <laughs> just the one of them. Yeah, all because of Gary Southgate. Just just quickly on that, actually, will uh, when we talk about you know the international duties and stuff, what are your, what are your thoughts on on this? Well, supposed you know uh, big you know big six bias or you know any club that's sort of towards the top of the, the table. Uh, you know mm. some of the lower ones might get overlooked. So you know the likes of such as ourselves. You know other teams that are sort of maybe in the bottom, you know bottom half of the league. They don't. Yeah. Some top of their, six currently. Yeah. Well, yeah, currently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got, got to caveat that. Got to caveat that. Yeah, but yeah. just you know, it's, it's historically the, the 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 smaller clubs, let's say, you know, yeah. some of their players might get overlooked. Do, do you agree with that sentiment? Like, do you think if you're good enough, you should play regardless of where where you are? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think obviously it's wrong, really, that that people do get overlooked. But in a way, it's kind of a natural thing as well. I think people mm. just see it as they're the better players because they're at the better club. Um, yeah. But which is not is not the case probably most of the time. Um, I think Southgate is kind of changing that a little bit. He looks like he would kind of not be swayed by that, like he would kind of look to different clubs if someone's really performing. So that's a positive for the future. But I think it's just kind of a natural, probably human thing, isn't it? They're at the bigger clubs, so they're kind of the better players. And if they're playing week in, week out in them top six, it's hard to kind of overlook them, it? even if someone's maybe playing better for a, a lower-end team. Um, yeah. E.G. Well, Connor Cody and Tyro Mings. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love how he just casually just goes. He just casually. Yeah. Yeah. The world just yeah. casually goes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's brilliant um, and of course um, what, when, you, when you were at Brighton this was obviously a big hot topic it was a big talking point um, uh, you know I'll, I'll start off with a quote this, this came from Gus Poirier uh, at your time at Brighton he said Will Buckley is not for sale how much are they talking about Wilfred Zaha 10 million they're going to have to go over that because he is better I've got no doubt so that was <laughs> Gus Poirier <laughs> well first of all what were your thoughts on, on that quote and, and do you remember it coming out at the time I don't remember that exact quote but I I remember like rumours of him saying I'm better than Zaha or something. I didn't know he'd said like them kind of things, but <laughs> you know what? He just it just kind of gave me confidence though. When you hear kind of stuff like that and yeah, the, yeah. the trust the ma- your manager has in you, um, it just kind of it just kind of gives you give, gives you more confidence and the belief to kind of think you know he thinks I'm brilliant, so go out there and kind of prove that. Yeah, and, and, and do you and think Will's that... were like? Oh, go on, we went for one at a time. Go on, Ben. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, you, you and Wilf were like the Messi Ronaldo of the Championship at that time. Like, so just enjoying both. <laughs> just go no, round Ferdinand. Just enjoying both. But it literally yeah. was like that. Was I don't know if you would ask this, Maz, but um, yeah, would, was would, did you like take notice of Zaha and go, oh, he scored this weekend. I need to make sure I score this weekend because of the comparison. Or was that completely out of your mind? No, it was. To be fair, that does sound oh, like Messi <laughs> Ronaldo now, doesn't it? But, uh... <laughs> That's no, brilliant. I did. I, I think I was kind of that. not like obsessed with what other players were doing, but I always kind of judged myself. You know, I, I wanted to be the best winger in the championship. That was mm-hmm. that was my aim. And you done that, obviously, as well. yeah. <laughs> and obviously, Zaha was obviously one one of the best then. I think he's obviously gone on to do better things than than he was then. But yeah, I always looked at to Zaha. Probably the other ones I can't remember the ones at the time, but I would always kind of judge myself on being the best winger in the championship. So yeah, I was always looking at what everyone else was doing and kind of setting targets, you know, trying to score goals every game. And yeah, I think you do. And I think that does push you on, which which kind of shows with, with the Messi and Ronaldo thing. 
they are watching each for all the time and it's that's the the kind of thing that you need you need someone to be chasing or kind of com- comparing yourself to 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 put keep you pushing really do you think then maybe injuries aside if your if your career was just completely injury aside i'm going to push you for this as well do you think that you could have been better than Zaha provided you didn't have all those injuries because let's face it right at the time yeah. it wasn't much in it was there really I mean you were let's face it yeah. one of the best wingers in the championship without a doubt taking on players left right and centre plenty of pace could cross the mm. ball could shoot do you think it could have happened or is, or not <laughs> yeah I don't know really I think it's probably just consistency in it and mm. I felt I obviously felt that my injuries did kind of hold me back kind of going on after Brighton really um but yeah, I think at that time when I was being compared to that, yeah, like you're right, it was it was cl- it was close, and I felt you know in my body I felt brilliant, everything I felt I could kind of beat ev- every man that I come up against, every kind of fullback every week. I was like, he's not stopping me today. So it's that that was kind of the, the attitude I went into. So Confidence. it was just obviously I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't continue that with probably the little niggly injuries over. You know, over time, that kind of caught up with me. Um, obviously, the hamstring injuries then kind of slow you down. And that, just that half a yard in it, I think there's, you know, you don't lose loads of pace, but in in football, it's fine margin. So, them little ones that I was getting to, you know, split second before the, the defender, then all of a sudden, if you're not getting there, that's the difference between getting tackled and going on and creating a goal. So, yeah, but yeah there's what Craig Bacall Smith said when he was on. I think that after his injuries, he did like just that little that little fracture yeah. in his pace cut down a bit. Yeah, and it didn't yeah. make a lot of difference. And, and just yeah, on definitely. that, Will, um, just on that, um, how how frustrating is it? I suppose when your body doesn't do what your mind wants it to. So like, you're talking about the injuries and losing that, you know, that little bit of pace. How how yeah. frustrating is that as a player to you know get those injuries? Because obviously it's out of your control, right? You know, most most injuries mm. you know come you know for whatever reason, and it's out of your control. How frustrating is that as a player, um, you know, mentally and physically, like to, to deal with that? I think it's probably one of the worst things, really, because, like, say you've got no control over it, and you just kind of like, well, I'm just going to have to deal with it. That's my body now, and mm-hmm. it's, in a way, you probably have to adapt your game, especially with me being kind of reliant on my speed. That was all. That was my game, really. Um, mm-hmm. So then, once I kind of hit them little stumbling marks where it's like well I can't just knock it past someone and, and run onto it now mm. you kind of have to change the chip over game. their head and run round them that was a really that one you did against yeah. Leeds wasn't it knock over their head and just run round them it always yeah. seems to work I, 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 remember, I remember the yeah. Newcastle one as well I, I think you nut, nutmeg Danny Simpson as well yes, yeah, and you uh, nutmeg Danny Simpson went down the wing and uh, and scored as well so yeah uh, yeah, it, it must be yeah it must be really frustrating yeah it was uh, yeah it definitely is kind of the worst things like say we're speaking to Macri he obviously had a big injury with his Achilles and to come back from from that, he, he's done well to even get back because you know it's, it's so competitive. There's always somebody ready to replace you, kind of thing, isn't there? So I think it, mentally it's quite tough as well to to kind of get back to your best. And when you when you think, oh, I just can't get back to my best, yeah. it's, it is so frustrating, really. Yeah. I mean, we've got no, our own no, own version of that in the modern day now. And Tarek Lamptey, obviously, he's a rapid player, yeah. pretty, pretty much oh, yeah. a very similar player to you. Very very quick relying on his pace mm. to beat a man and it works pretty much every time or it did you know he's obviously been yeah. out for what nine months now with injury I think it could be even more than that um, yeah he's yeah. definitely coming up to it be a year soon yeah I mean sure. as yeah. someone that's experienced that I mean do you think that you know it could impact Tarek quite hard with, with his career too yeah definitely yeah. was it his hamstring <laughs> as well yeah, yeah, I think he did his hamstring. Yeah. Yeah. had so an operation kind of... on his hamstring as well so it's quite yeah see, see luckily I never did it that bad, so I had to have um, an operation. So you know, God knows how how bad it was. Um, but yeah, even with me, with every like you know four weeks out, then six weeks out with little tears and stuff like that, it obviously had an impact on on my speed. So something like that, I'd imagine, it's gonna it is gonna have a massive massive impact on on him. Um, so I remember still, originally it said two weeks. Young, so it was like oh, yeah. I get two weeks, and we were like yeah, oh, then three weeks, <laughs> yeah. ten months later. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. yeah, it was yeah, it was a strange one really. I think because. I don't know if it was it was um, on purpose, but they kind of kept it under wraps a little bit, and it was always you was always yeah. waiting for him to come back, weren't you? And then, like yeah. say, ten months went by, and he still worked back. Then you're thinking, oh, I think they're kind of keeping this keeping this quiet a little bit, but mm. yeah. you know, hopefully he can get back to to what he was because he he was unbelievable when he when he when he first mm. arrived. So I remember yeah. I remember Potter said that. Um, I think during the beginning, like maybe after the first few months of him being out, he was like, we don't want to rush him back and ruin his career when he's older. Like you want to make sure yeah. that you've really, really, well, Longevity, I don't know, yeah, yeah, maybe had the, 
yeah, longevity, had the operation yeah. and given him as much time as he needs, rather than some managers might have just rushed him back because mm-hmm. they needed him for performances there and then. But um, maybe no, that's yeah. what hopefully Yeah, definitely. Future, right. Yeah, because obviously when I did mine, I was, you always, you get injured and then you're kind of aiming for a game that you want to get back for. And it's never realistic, really. You're always like, it's always probably two or three weeks longer than what you should, kind of should be aiming mm-hmm. for. So, mm-hmm. like, save. If Potter has had that influence to say, you know, he's got another 10, 15 years in him, don't rush him back for the sake of a couple of months, then it is the right thing. But I know he'll obviously as a player you're itching to get back. So mm. hopefully he's he's fully fit and now he is back. Yeah, I mean, sure. I we're talking I about Premier League on, players. Go oh, go on, Mass, if you want to. I mean, I was going to talk no, no, going no, on to his main career more than just Brighton now because uh, obviously yeah. we're talking about Premier yeah. League. So obviously you went to the Premier League with Sunderland. Um, what, what was it like in the Premier League? Because we talked about the jump to the Championship was probably the biggest in your career. Would yeah. you say that that was bigger than going to the Premier League or or not? Um, like I said, the, the League 2 one to the Championship, I just felt I felt like I weren't ready for it. Whereas, obviously, the when I got sold to Sunderland, I was like, that's always what I've always wanted to do to get to the Premier League. And I did feel like I was ready. Um, so there was no kind of no bother really stepping into that mm. uh, but what you do notice quite quickly is creating chances or scoring goals that is so much harder than it is in the mm. championship even though obviously the championship's at a great level that little step up the kind of once you get into that final third it's so hard to create something um, mm. the, the type of, the way the football is played as well from the championship to the Premier League is, is so different like I say it's so much slower until you get to that final third, but then to create summer, you need to be so, so good and so kind of on the ball to kind of to, to create something really. Um, whereas mm. championships are 100 mile an hour all over the pitch. Um, so yeah, that was that was a massive kind of learning curve. But like I said, I, I felt I was ready. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's, and, and, that's the main the main difference really. And did you leave? So obviously, you know, you left you left Brighton for Sunderland. Did you leave with a heavy heart, or was it quite an easy decision? Like you know, I'm making a, I'm making a step up to to the uh, Premier League. Yeah, um, dream come true. But yeah, dream come true. Was it quite an yeah. easy decision, or did you still feel like you had a bit of a relationship with Brighton, or you, you know, did you leave on good terms? And how did that end? Yeah, um, I can't really remember the, the terms that I left on. It weren't as good as I thought it should have been. Really. Um, oh. I think there was, I think obviously Sammy Hippie was a manager and yeah, I just didn't, never really got on with him that well, even though I didn't really do anything wrong. I, don't, I didn't really see what kind of his, his issues were. Um, but yeah, I was just I was just kind of ready. I was ready to make that move, even though obviously looking back now, Brighton was the best place I've ever played at and loved every minute of it. But I was, when it came up to play in the Premier League, that was always all I ever wanted to do. So it was kind of no decision to be made, really. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of like, yeah, that's my dream. I've got a goal. It's, it's Gus Poyet as well. So it was, mm. it was kind of ready. Yeah. Other than yeah, joining yeah. Sunderland, like any club in the Premier League, but Sunderland, please, as a new coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, keep it quiet. Keep this don't, come out. don't come out like my new castle. So, so I mean, was, was be... Hoopier a, a big... Oh, got, uh, just quickly, was, was Hoopier a, a big like factor? Because obviously you mentioned that um, uh, you know he had a, seemed to have a problem with you. Was was that like yeah. a big thing for you, or, or did you expect that to no, happen? No, no, it wasn't a big. No, obviously I would have been happy staying still, and I, I think it would have been fine. But I don't know. I just kind of went back pre season, and obviously being kind of one of the main players then, and I, I kind of weren't playing and stuff like that. I was in and out of the team in pre-season leading up to it. I don't think I started the, the first game of the season. Um, and I probably weren't at my best, but I was still probably good enough to like, you know, kind of be playing and then kind of giving time to get back to my best. Um, but yeah, he just kind of, he, I don't know. He, he, his system kind of actually didn't suit my game, to be honest. with The way he wanted mm. to play, it didn't suit the way I... I, was I don't playing, think you suited um, many of the players at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, no, that was obviously another, another thing that he, he, tr- he tried doing. It just didn't work out from what he wanted the players to do. It was it was some strange things, but obviously it worked previously for him. So I don't I don't know. I mean, you could say yeah, you jumped no, ship a bit, so probably at the right time to go to the Premier League with manager you definitely. know. I mean, obviously for Brighton fans at the time, it's, it was a tough one to take. I remember me in particular, I was thinking, oh God, we're losing Buckley. That's a, that's quite a big blow. But, you know, to we finished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, it's obviously probably the right time to move on, I, I suppose. But 
Yeah, I think that season in general, I mean, what, cause you must have probably looked at us a little bit. I mean, in a weird way, probably thinking, oh God, I hope they do lose the next couple of games. I mean, there must have been a bit of that involved. <laughs> or, or was it, or was it a bit like now we've moved on the past, the past? Um, you know, did you not really look too much? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, I suppose for Brighton, I always, obviously always loved Brighton and what they did for me. So I, yeah, so I didn't have that kind of bitterness, you know, the way it ended. Um, maybe, Looking back, like Sam Hippie, the way you treat me, you probably think a bit like, "Oh, I hope he gets, I hope he does lose, I hope he gets sacked." So, have a point. <laughs> it's kind of thick. It's kind of fickle to be like that because football yeah. moves on, and the long term people that are um, kind of at the club are going to be the fans, people that work behind the scenes. So, there's no point in kind of you know wishing bad on anyone because everyone moves on. The fans are the ones that are always going to be there, and they treated me so well, and everyone at the club. So, it was kind of. I don't think I ever really kind of looked back that much, to be honest with you. Um, I was just kind of obviously looking forward in my career then and, and what I was going to mm. kind of try and achieve at Sunderland. So obviously, like look, looking back now, like, you know, I love I love Brighton and that was kind of the best place I've ever been at. And, and for my so, career, yeah. it was brilliant as well. So, yeah. Best place you've been at, right. you reckon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, by far. The way the, way the club was run... Um, the way the fans were with the players, you know, even players, I've said it before, even players that weren't necessarily playing, you know, kind of ones that were on the bench or in, in the reserves, whatever, the fans all knew them, they all treated them with respect um, and kind of stuck by the team, even when, you know, even when we was losing at times. So, mm. and that's quite rare to find, I think, because um, fans can, can get quite angry sometimes if the club's not winning. So I'll put that down to the with Dean days. I think a lot of the people would experience the worst, Worst time at the with Dean, getting rained yeah. on, no protection, whilst losing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I then think it was the, the um, in the lovely stadium. You can't complain, really. No, I think it was the move into the Amex was just like that first season was just everyone was just buzzing all the time. Mm. You know, win, lose or draw, the fans were there every week and just just enjoying what what they what they now had. Um, I think that's why it was such a good atmosphere to play in week in week out. I think, I think it's a good time to actually same... speak about the elephant in the room of the goal. Go on, <laughs> go, you know, going to the Amex. Talk us through it. Like, how did that make you feel? Yeah, just talk us through the moment. I think you came on as a sub, right, and you scored two goals. Yeah, that was probably yeah probably the best day of my career, really, especially at Brighton as well. Um, yeah, I was just kind of just itching to get on, um, and yeah, it just kind of kind of the best. The best day, especially, I think the fans deserve that as well more more than anyone, more than the players and everyone involved in it. It was just kind of, they waited so long, it was kind of meant to be, wasn't it? I think that day was yeah. just kind of written in the stars, really. And, you know, luckily it came late on, but but we got there. Yeah. And, and, and do you reckon you were more annoyed at being a sub then? Because <laughs> uh, it seems to me from just talking to you for half an hour or so, you've got a very mm. like elite mentality in terms of, you know, you want to be the best, you want to be the best at what you could do. So were you were you annoyed at being on the bench? And were you like, right, I'm going to come on and prove him, you know, prove him wrong and show him why I yeah. shouldn't be on the bench? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I weren't annoyed. It was just kind of just itching to get on. I remember warming up and I think, it's because I came to, obviously, when they just, you know, the lads had just got promoted from League One and it was a really good team, you know, kind of Kazeng Luwalu I was playing in front of me and I couldn't really have any any problems with kind of whinging about it because he was playing unbelievable. So mm. it was kind of, the squad was brilliant, kind of the, the mentality and the, the kind of camaraderie between the, the League One squad that got promoted was brilliant and that was just kind of a great time to be at Brighton really in that squad um, it was kind of like everyone was kind of no sulkers as well you know the lads that were on the bench kind of supported the lads that were playing um, and that's kind of the squad it was that, that first yeah. year but obviously yeah I wanted to play but I was just kind of it was just kind of you know when I get on I, I need mean, to make an impact and make I mean, sure I'm playing about, like, that. you know being nice to the, you know giving it to the fans you know you want to do it for the fans and the, for the players for the team but what did it feel like to mm. you? Obviously, that ball is played through from Craig Noon. What's going in your mind right now? That's the 97th minute. You know it's probably the last chance of the game. It's one all. What's going mm. through your mind? What are you thinking in that moment? Uh, you know, is it clear your head, just make sure you score and then celebrate after? Or is it, you know, what's going through your brain? Yeah. I, you know what? I didn't really, there was no, I wasn't really thinking about anything. It was just kind of, you know, you're on the pitch and you're in the moment. But I remember that when I did get played through, Time did. It just seemed to take ages for me to to get to the point where right, I need to kind of kind of slide it down the side with me. It was just 
it really just slowed down everything. I think it was just the emotion of the day and I don't know, yeah, it, it was a weird one. It was a kind of a moment that I've never had before. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of, I think I was just in the zone of kind of what yeah. I needed to do and, you know, the way I needed to, to finish it. But yeah, obviously once it went in, that's when it just kind yeah. of went off. I mean, the first, thing I always, the first thing I always think of when I think of Will Buckley playing for Brighton is I just think composure. Whenever you're in front of goal, yeah. you were so cool in a one-on-one. Every single time it would just be slightly past the goalkeeper very, very calmly. I seem to remember multiple goals where you would just, you know, completely keep your composure. One, one comes to my head, it's really random. I think it was against Leicester. It was in the last minute or something like that. It's chipped over. Most people banging that over the bar. You just slide it into the bottom <laughs> corner as if it's, you know, nothing. I mean, last minute goals seem to be your thing. Like, that composure, you don't... It's, it's hard to come by. You know, not many players have the cool head. I mean, we could probably do one of those right now in the, in the, in the club. I mean, what was it? You know, how do you, how do, you do that? <laughs> how do you keep your head so cool in those sort of moments? Yeah, I don't. I think it was just I was just playing with so much confidence all my time at the Brighton. And I think I was just confident in everything I was doing. I was convinced I was going to score or I was going to make the right pass. And I think it was probably more of a mindset. I think of what I was in. I was so confident with what everything I was doing and being on the pitch. Um, and it was yeah, at that time of my career, you know, it was I was just so composed with everything that I was doing. And I just I never felt like I was going to miss really. I just yeah, that was I was at that kind of stage where everything was going in. I was maybe getting a little bit of luck every now and again when... You, you make know, your own luck, Will. Yes, you, yeah, yeah, but, um, you do. Yeah. Speaking, of, like, speaking of obviously that hot run you were on for a long, long time, yeah. are you were you quite a superstitious player? So I kind of look at your number, number 30, was that something that you kind of had to be or was there anything you'd done for the game that was, well, yeah, did you have any superstitions at all or was it just no, number 30? I think there was a few little things that I, that I did but I wasn't no I wasn't superstitious really the, num- the number was obviously just kind of what I came through at Rochdale and that was my first squad number so I liked to have that um, but again there was no problems if I didn't have that it was just kind of yeah one of them things I don't, I don't think there was much competition for the 30 will I, don't think. I know yeah <laughs> yeah I was lucky really <laughs> Good one to have. They're like, well, yeah, we'll, we'll give Will the 30. He, he can have it. But like one of the, uh, I'd go to a new club and it'd be a young lad who's probably never played before. So he's like, all right, yeah, you can have that. <laughs> yeah. Not that bothered about a 30. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's Taylor Richards that currently has 30 at us now. I it, think is, yeah. Yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. And then, and then, and then going on, obviously, um, at, at Sunderland. So after, I believe it was t- uh, two seasons in the Premier League, or what was it one full season? Is, is that right? Um, yeah, what do they have? Yeah, yeah, the full season yeah. we we stayed up. Yeah. Um, yeah, Gus kind of got. I think Gus got sacked the January, February, some around that time. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was it was a good season, really. I think mm. obviously Sunderland fans expected a lot, but really to stay in, to stay in the Premier League was was kind of the main aim, really. Yeah, uh, and obviously, yeah, you stayed in the Premier League, and then the following season, unfortunately, um, I think I believe you were one of seven players to be released. What 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 was this sort of emotions going through your head? Was that the first time you'd been released throughout your whole career? I'm assuming. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of. Yeah, out of contract, really, and I was kind of I was ready to leave Sunderland because obviously it didn't really work out in the long term. Um, I was kind of a little bit excited, you know, to see what kind of offers was going to come and stuff like that, and a fresh start. Um, but I don't, I don't think you realise until you're in that situation that it's not really a good position to be in. Obviously, unless you've had a, you know, you've had a really good season and you've been banging goals in and you, you're quite sought after. But obviously, I've been off the scene then for probably a couple of years. Um, so yeah, the offers didn't come kind of as thick and fast as I was expecting, really. Um, so it's, it's not a great position to be in. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was just kind of one of them things that that you find yourself in, and it's becoming more common now. I think with with the way the way the game's going. Will, did yeah. you ever think no, about a, a Brighton return at that point, or was that never in your mind? Did you ever think, oh, I'd quite like to go back, or was it never past the past? I say, you, yeah, you know what, I would have always loved to go back, but I think it was just it probably wasn't the right it wasn't the right fit. Um, I can't remember if Brighton were probably in the Premier League then, so I probably wouldn't have been yeah, kind have of on their really list right. anyway. Um, yeah. We've not been we've we've not playing so yeah you know I would I would always love to go back um, yeah like I say it was it was the best best club I've been at and you know I think it, it turned out well really obviously when I left kind of the couple of years after then you got to the to the Premier League and it was probably better that you kind of had that bit little bit more time to build the squad and now obviously you're reaping the the rewards for it mm, definitely speaking of other clubs. Um, 
you had three consecutive loan spells before joining Bolton permanently. Um, yeah. How were the loan spells for you? So for the listeners and viewers, it was Leeds, Birmingham, Sheffield Wednesday, right? Um, yeah. Talk us through those loans. Were there any yeah. third? Yeah. Um, Leeds was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh about it now, stop playing. But yeah. Just my, for... my Leeds mate did text me that. He yeah. said, ask oh, Will about his time at Leeds. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, also had, I also had my boss message me as well saying, ask him about his time at Leeds. Because yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think it was a Not general great. consensus. It wasn't great. You know, one of the games that I did actually play was against Brighton and Zamora scored in the 93rd minute. So it was kind oh, of yeah. like... Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, cheers, cheers, cheers Zamora. <laughs> yeah, I think, that, <laughs> I think that was the season, obviously. Brighton went up, I think. Um, mm. But yeah, it just I went I went in when Juve Rosler was the manager. He brought me in. Um, he looked like he was doing really good things. Lost three games while I was there before I kind of managed to get into the team. Got sacked. Steve Evans came in and just kind of had his players that he wanted to play, or whether I don't know who was picking the team at the time. To be honest, what, what was but, Steve um... Evans like? Because I, I I know from like things here and in, in the media and just well just seeing his interviews, you can tell he's yeah. he's a he's a bit of a character. What, what was? Oh what yeah, was he he like is, at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, I mean. I don't, it's hard to say. I weren't there that long, but yeah, he was a bit mental. But he was <laughs> he, he was he wasn't as he wasn't as mental as he probably comes across comes across in interviews, right. you know. I think it's probably a bit more kind of he's got that kind of people think about that of him. So mm. he kind of maybe has to kind of act up like that. So he, he weren't you no, know, he's a nice guy though. He's a nice guy. So but yeah, it just didn't work out and um I think I was there about six weeks or something, and then we kind of yeah. both clubs agreed to to go back, um, and then yeah, on, on to Birmingham. Then that, that same season, I think in the January or February, um, yeah. and I, you know what, I quite enjoyed it there. It was that was quite a good club. Um, but the fans were good as well. Oh, yeah, they was like, yeah, both big big clubs. Yeah, Leeds and Birmingham. yeah, yeah. Birmingham was was good actually. Gary Rowett was the manager then. Um, I kind of went in. Um, when David Cottrell got injured, so that's kind of why I got brought in. Speaking to, to Cots the other day, actually, but yeah, I got I got took in because he was injured. I think I played about five or six games on the bounds, was playing quite well. But then as soon as he came back in, I was kind of out of the team, which obviously kind of you know killed the low move again. Mm. Uh, but yeah, nothing nothing bad to say about Birmingham. It's a good club, well run. Um, yeah, and enjoyed my time there. Just would just would have liked a, a bit more game time, really. Yeah, no, of course. Um, and just a really, really random one. Now you said that you were there at Birmingham at, uh, with Gary Rowe. Do you ever play with Grant Hall by any chance? Just because he's a personal friend of mine. Now, I don't. Do you ever? Was he there Grant. at the same time as? Who started at yeah, Brighton? He, yeah, yeah. He, he was at Brighton uh, in his yeah, year, well, and then he's at yeah, well, he was, he, yeah. Well, the only time I played was was at Brighton when he was coming through. Um, oh, amazing! Did, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know if he ever played. Did he ever play for Brighton first team or not? Uh, he played Thank once, uh, oh, twi- yeah. twice, twice, yeah. twice. Yeah, South- Southampton oh, and Wrexham, I believe. Mm. Yeah, he, well, he's done. He's done really well, actually. And he? I think mm. he kind of he kind of come through at Brighton, but would, was never getting you know into the first team. I think it was like yeah. Grant Hall, Jake Foster, Caskey, and a few others. That's um, it. Yeah, yeah. It was coming yeah, through. They never him as well. Yeah, yeah. and obviously Steve um, Cook, who Steve, went to Bournemouth, was kind of Bournemouth, it, yeah. it was in his That's kind it. of. Year yeah. or maybe the year above. So I mean, even Steve Cook didn't didn't really play that much at Brighton, did he? And he's gone on yeah, to do he, well. So yeah, he, yeah, he killed it after leaving us. <laughs> you know, really yeah. but no, that, that was just a very random one, just because the the Row at, uh, Birmingham connection um, it just yeah. reminded me of that. Yeah. Um, and then and and then the final one, mm. um, just just we mentioned that you know the injuries by your own admission sort of blighted your career a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you have any? It's difficult to sort of like word it probably, but like, was there any regrets? Obviously, it's hard to say that an injury is regret because it's out of your control. Control, but do you have any regrets yeah. during your career like you know certain moves or um anything that you sort of look back on and think oh, maybe did that differently um yeah no like with the injury side like you say you can't really regret getting injured because you obviously no. don't mean to do it yeah. there's obviously yeah. might, things that you might be able to put into place now looking back that but again i was doing everything right at the time so i didn't regret any of that um and i just kind of take that as because of the way i played the game they was kind of inevitable to get them injuries um mm. So I just kind of accept that, really. Uh, that was kind of part of the way I was as a player. You got to get them little hamstring niggles, and that was just one of them things. But yeah, um, regret anything in my career? No, maybe maybe the long move to Leeds. Probably looking back, I weren't. <laughs> it's all right because we all hate Leeds here was... anyway, so it yeah. works for us. <laughs> yeah, perfectly. <laughs> well, they like that. Everybody hates Leeds, and all this. Yeah. So they like they that. Anyway. Villain, but, yeah. yeah, but again, it was just more of nothing against nothing against Leeds as a club. It was just. 
I'd had a few injuries again. My knee was a little bit yeah. sore and it wasn't right. And I kind, I kind of went kind of thinking, right, I want to play football and I weren't ready to go and, and go straight into a, a, you know, a good championship team. So yeah, probably that's the only regret really. Um, again, you could say leaving Brighton. Everyone says, oh, I bet you wish you'd all, you wouldn't have left Brighton. Oh, my mates always yeah, say that. Nah, but it was, sure, again, yeah. it was, it was the right time to do it. Mm-hmm. Brighton have gone on to do better things after I left. So yeah, no regrets really. I've you can't turn down the Premier League. I don't think anyone yeah. should be able to hold no, that against 100%. you. You get the call yeah. up to the Premier yeah. League, especially yeah. especially yeah. with Sammy Hoopy as the gaffer as well. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Ripping into Sammy at the right I mean, time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. I mean. I mean, apparently you said in the in the athletic recently about ret- retirement, because obviously going on to after football, um, you said it was easier yeah. uh, from the pandemic. You know, talk us through it. I mean, how did that? How was that for you? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I got injured in the January twenty twenty, um, and then I think they stopped letting fans in by the March or something like that. So yeah. by the time I was thinking about trying to get back playing, football was just it was so bad to watch. You know, with the fans not in yeah. there and. Hmm. I wasn't really missing it that much because you watch the games and, and they just look like, obviously look like training games, didn't they? So it was yeah, yeah. kind of did help really not kind of make me get too down about not being back playing. Um, but yeah, obviously now it's back to kind of, <laughs> kind of back to normal and it, it, it's unbelievable again. So. Just ca- calling up the gaffer at Bolton. Can I get, <laughs> yeah. can I get a game? <laughs> yeah, it looks, looks good again now. All the fans <laughs> are <good. Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've retired, then is there is there any clubs in particular you watch? Obviously, do you watch Brighton that much now, or or not really? Do you, you know Newcastle yeah. even? Yeah, do, to be do fair, you keep Newcastle, yeah. probably more the lower leagues, probably Bolton, um, and then obviously with what I'm doing now, kind of youth teams and stuff like that. So I don't actually watch that much of Brighton anymore. I mean, some of the players that yeah. they get in, I'm like, where where have they come from? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Please <laughs> do that as well, mate. <laughs> <So> everybody <laughs> yeah. that, don't they? <laughs> Who's Andy but, Sakiri? Yeah. Who is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, they all so, seem so, to be. Yeah. I mean, they've got they've got it set up right because they all seem yeah. to be kind of coming on well now, don't they? But yeah, like I say, it's it's hard it's hard to kind of watch everyone when you when you stop playing, but you kind of just keep an eye on the result all results really kind of teams yeah. that I've been at, especially Brighton. Um, yeah. But yeah. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, after the pandemic, you now run is it Web Sports Management? Do you call it Web or W E B? No web, yeah. Um, obviously, web, my yeah. initials, but yeah, web sports management. Yeah, we, so I've gone into we, that now. Yeah, yeah. No, we did. We did think that because uh, Ben was saying earlier, he was like, it's, "It was definitely Will Buckley." But we don't, what's the what's the East stand for? <laughs> what's the East stand for? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're not you're not knowing my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone Wikipedia. I'm sure we'll find it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a bad one. Oh, there you go, Edward. There you go, Edward. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There yeah, you go. <laughs> oh, that, that was quick. Sorry, <laughs> um, basic basic reasons, have you been enjoying that? Have you been enjoying running that? Um, yeah, what's it yeah, like? yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of. I was always going to stay in football when I did kind of stop playing, uh, and obviously with the injury, it just kind of come a little bit quicker than I probably would have liked. But yeah, it's something that I've kind of just just gone into and still getting to all the games, still well involved with it, still speaking to people, managers, and players. So it doesn't really feel like I've been out of it really. Um, mm. It's just more the, obviously the watching rather than the playing now. But yeah, with the lads to look after, it's you kind of get that excitement through them and seeing them mm. kind of progress in their careers and kind of brings back memories of, you know, what I went through and the feelings I had and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And like I say, just kind of passing my knowledge down now to, to the lads I look after. And the lads you look after, is, yeah. Is there anyone in your books that you think we should look out for at all? Um, Who, yeah, yeah, all who's, who's the <laughs> yeah, no, there's um, a <laughs> proper agent over yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so two of the lads are still youth team players, uh, but hopefully going to be good players. Um, and then I've got two goalkeepers actually. One at Bolton, um, he's a first year professional, Luke Hutchinson. He's he's really well so, uh, thought of. And yeah, a lad at Doncaster as well, first year professional, Ben Bottomley. So again, they're still young. So with, as a goalkeeper, it's it's just time really in it before you kind of get into into the first team action. But yeah, they're both with the with the first team squads and gaining experience so yeah. it's I, I, I think I, they'll be good players 
and and how invaluable was your because you talk about your experience and how you can pa pass that down how invaluable is it to have a, a person such as yourself like because I, I i've been in conversations before um with regards to like i've spoken to agents before um and you know other sort of people in, in that industry and you know yeah. sometimes they get a bit of a bad rep you know like they they're mm. either you know some people are like, oh they're just out for the money they want to you know milk milk these players for all their worth that kind of stuff you know yeah it's, it's a bit like estate agents you know they've got a bit of a bad rep in, in that, yeah in, in, in that respect would you yeah would you would you agree that well, first of all, do you disagree with that statement? And is it like more about actually trying to nurture these players and actually give them, you know, pass on this knowledge that you talk about? Yeah, I think obviously that's why I've gone into it because I've kind of got the experience and what I've been through and stuff like that. It's kind of my main kind of selling point to the players um, and with, with helping them out. But I think, yeah, there's definitely, there is bad agents out there and ones that are just in it for the money. And I think they're the ones that kind of, get all the media headlines don't they the big ones ben like Paul agent Popper's and stuff like that yeah Mina yeah. Rola, yeah. <laughs> yeah so I think because they're always they're the biggest stories I think everybody thinks that and you know there is some that's, that's like that's like in life in it there's people out there who are just kind of after people's yeah, money but now I've gone into it you kind of realize how many good companies and good people there is that work into it um and you know it's it's a full-time it's a full-time job for life really and I think People probably don't see that from the outside. You just think, oh, it's just an agent doing doing a deal. But there's there's so much more to it than that. And I think I think there is, I think they deserve a lot more respect. You know, in, you know, most of them anyway who, who are doing a good job for the players. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I say, I think they just the bad the bad rep comes from the few bad a ones few, that kind yeah. of are out there for themselves, really. Yeah. And, um, no, just on, on that, we got one of our listeners actually. I think it works for you, Dan Harrington. You messaged us oh, saying, yeah. saying that, yeah. yeah. So he messaged us saying that about the or about web management. Um, but also, yeah. So shout out to Dan. Um, <laughs> also, <laughs> if there's anyone out there listening right now, what would you say to them? Obviously, you haven't been a professional footballer like yourself. How would mm. they get into becoming an agent? Or yeah, what would your tips be for them that want to get into the industry? Because it must um, be quite tougher to get into. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I don't know where you'd start. Mm. <laughs> I think obviously we've been in the game. Obviously, I've got kind of got contacts of players who are still playing you know players yeah. who've gone into being a manager so I can kind of speak to them as friends really um but yeah I mean anybody can be an agent all you have to do is kind of kind of register yourself and kind of go into that but it is very difficult to start it's very competitive um there's, there's kind of three or four really big companies um that kind of kind of cover nearly near for all the Premier League players anyway um Apart from yeah, Harry I Kane's mean, brother, unless you've got a brother that's going yeah. to just sit on yeah. him and make all your money from him. But again, it's like anything. I think if you work hard and you're, and you're willing to kind of put put time and effort in, you just get to games, speak to people, you know, kind of help them out, give your opinion on what, what might help them. You, you never know what, what can happen, but it is, it is difficult. It is, it is yeah. a difficult industry to get into. Would, would, would you say it's more of a sort of who you know rather than what you know? Is that a fair statement or do you, do you disagree? Yeah, possibly. I think at the start, yeah, I think you obviously need to kind of know managers, players, who to speak to if you have got a good player. You know, if obviously you've not been in the game, you know, where do you start kind of thing. So but I think you, the players kind of, you know, Someone always said it to me. The player gets the move. It's not. It's nothing to do with the agent, really. Obviously, you're mm -hmm. there to to make sure everything goes well in the background. But if a player's good enough, he'll get you'll get a big move, no matter which agency he's with. So, kind of finding the the right player, really. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. And then, and then, final one. Um, outside of work, um, what, what what is it your like your favorite thing to do? Are you are you have a golfer? Are you into anything random? Like, what, what kind of hobbies do you do outside um, of work? To be fair, yeah, I've started playing golf a little bit more now. I was always kind of. I played it a little bit when I was playing, but I was always a bit, you know, I was a bit OCD with getting injured and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, I shouldn't really be swinging that club at 100 mile an hour, twisting my back and all that. So I didn't really play that much when I was when I was playing. But yeah, now I'm into it a lot more now. We played at um, the Belfry a couple of weeks oh, back and that lovely. was very, unbelievable. So yeah. Very fancy, Will. Come on. Yeah, you're you're stunning on us on the pod. Off <laughs> <laughs> golf golfer now. So yeah, I'm enjoying yeah. that. Just enjoying a bit more freedom, really. And, just get into games. Obviously, that's a bit of a hobby, really, because you know when you're playing, you don't go watching games. You just kind of play, recover, train, yeah. and play. So it's now it's just kind of going where where I couldn't go, kind of when yeah. I was playing, really. 
No, amazing. Yeah, Good yeah. stuff. Well, that, yeah, that, 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 that wraps it up really beautifully. That, that, that segment, anyway, wraps it up really beautifully. Um, yeah. So, really <laughs> appreciate that. Um, now, this is a bit of a random one. So, we're going to go on to the fan questions as well. So, we, 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 we put out to our Twitter and Instagram followers uh, to send in their questions. So, we've got quite a few really good questions that we're going to go through if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Howard, just quickly before we start that, uh, we just, just a bit of a random one. And we, we tweeted this uh, not too long ago. So, we showed you this before we actually started. Um, recording but there was a facebook post uh, supposedly <laughs> from you anyway uh, we'll, we'll get on to that but in 2012 yeah, you. <laughs> you, need yeah, to yeah. Find, you need to find the actual person who did this actually i know yeah find after this segment this we need if to you're watching, find find comment, yeah. comment down if you already yeah. know who it is comment down <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, so for everyone who's not, not aware, uh, and, you know, to provide a bit of context, essentially it was a Facebook post where it so just basically kept scrolling top, down. Yeah. yeah, and we'll show it on the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, but for the listeners that aren't watching on YouTube, basically what it was, it was a Facebook p- post where it was like a ladder and it just kept going down with, you know, different questions <laughs> like keep going, keep going, keep going. And then right at the bottom, it just says, well done, you've discovered Crystal Palace. Now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously the Brighton fans loved it. And of course, you know, our rival, we were with, with Palace. Um, first of all, Will, first question. <laughs> Was it you or not? <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't me. No, it wouldn't oh, be no. Oh, you ruined it all, <laughs> Will. You ruined it all. You got to hear it. Oh, I mean, to be honest, whoever it was, they have way too much time on their hands, don't they? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who would have done this? that much time then? <laughs> it, it went on for far too long. It went on, like the joke was good, but it went on for far too long. So in yeah, future, definitely. if you're going to do that joke, just just shorten it down a bit. You know, yeah, a bit of feedback there. Um, get a time all right, well, it wasn't ten you, years uh, when it was actually funny. <laughs> not don't get it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a proper like 2012 Facebook post, wasn't it? Like yeah, really. in classic. Uh, but yeah, it generated a lot of um, it generated a lot of um, yeah. Well, on our tweet, it got over 235 likes, uh, 17 quote tweets, and 15 retweets, and a lot of uh, Crystal Palace fans actually got involved, thinking it was actually yeah. you. So we apologise, Will. If you, if you get any hate mail, if you get any hate oh, mail, we apologise. Oh, well, I never seen it. I never, I never got any yeah. directly to me. So obviously, whoever Good. did it got all that, got all that hate. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Brilliant. Um, all right. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll start with the fan questions, and, I, and I'll kick us off. Um, this is from Tweak It Up Thirteen. Great username. Um, best and worst player in training at a Brighton. Um, yeah, just to clarify. Oh God, best. Best player, yeah. Nooney probably Nooney was up there just because he was so competitive, like just wanted to win all the time, and would end up like kicking off. Gordon Greer was always good. Again, you could you couldn't probably believe that, yeah. Yeah. Couldn't like determine whether he was in a game or in training. He was that competitive. (laughs) Um, Worst one, I don't know. Worst. It's got to be somebody doesn't doesn't really try. (laughs) No, yeah, yeah Kaz was all right. Like, He'd go off really? sulking a little bit sometimes if he didn't get the ball or something. But yeah. <laughs> probably people who, who didn't try, which probably like Vicente or someone like that, even though he was yeah. probably the best player. He's unreal, he, like, yeah. Have to, yeah, yeah. If he didn't get a pass or something, he just like sulk and probably won't run about or anything really? like that. So, really? well, yeah, but um, yeah, the best, yeah, probably Nooney, I'd say he was, he'd go on mad runs, meet about five players. What, what about, on, what about on Vicente quickly? Smith? Oh yeah. Oh, was, was he was he a hard worker? Craig what, who's that? Smith? Uh, Mikel Smith in training was he? Was oh he yeah, Mac, a... yeah. To be fair, Mac yeah. would just the same as, as he was in the game. He's never stopped running ball in the corner. From, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, yeah literally just flying about everywhere. <laughs> yeah, taking everyone. Well, just getting stuck into everyone really. But yeah, Mac that's was yeah. he was yeah he was one of the hardest workers anyway. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jack Albion asked, oh, sorry, on Vicente still. How mm. good was Vicente? When you train yeah, him with well, him, and yeah, was he the best player you've ever played with? Yeah, he is. Yeah, definitely. I think just because being Spanish and the way they play the game is completely different to anything we do over here. So I think straight away people seen that he was just like so kind of slow in the things he did, but you you couldn't get the ball off him. People couldn't get near him. Yeah, his weight of pass, it's different level the vision. Yeah, literally, just kind of. Kind of why why he was at Valencia for so long, basically, and why he was um, at Brighton. Were you a bit like stunned yeah. when you found out he was going to Brighton? <laughs> what was the reaction like in the Brighton camp? Oh, everyone was just kind of in awe of him. I think, um, really? but again, he was he was like a top a top guy, and everyone that kind of came in, um, Inigo Calderon kind of took under the wing because he was obviously the Spanish speaker, and he just kind of he kind of phased people in. So obviously, then Bruno, mm. Orlandi, Vicente, like. They kind of we had a great kind of camaraderie with that Lopez. Mm, yeah, Lopez. He, 
um, Caldi kind of made sure everyone was welcome and, and, you know, kind of got involved with, with the group and didn't kind of, you know, stay to themselves or anything like that, which can happen really. So yeah, he was, but yeah, they sent a... Uh, Spanish I mean, Armada, Will. That's, yeah, he was, he had, a right, he had a right group of them. Sure, we used to do like England v Spain sometimes on a Friday. No way. <laughs> no, that's that's close. Who that often won, of Will? Who often won? That's Probably not the English, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah definitely not pen- <laughs> definitely not a penalty. I hope you, I hope you didn't do penalties. Yeah. Uh, England, no. England. Stayed away from the pens, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> so well, I just, uh, that's next funny one, because yeah. oh yeah, I was going to say it's funny because I was going to say funniest dressing room moment. That was sent it from Ollie Jones. Um, any any particular pranks? Anything that comes to mind? What what, what happened? Um, again, pro- probably Nooney. Nooney was like a bit of a practical joker. And I'm sure you can probably tell that off those what, interviews on Sky yeah. Sports. Wasn't I mean, it? I can't remember what, what oh, he wore, but he, he came out to training in some, I think it was near Christmas. I think it was like a Santa, you know, you, you see people running the marathon in like a Santa's outfit or something. Yeah. And he came, he came running out to training once just in a full Santa suit. <laughs> or he would like, if someone had a bad pair of trainers or a bag jacket, he'd come running out to training in it and just random stuff like that. <laughs> but was like, so like, just so funny. Were there ever so any pr- was like like the pranks or anything joker. like that? Yeah. Was there any like big pranks, anything that really got pulled, or was it not really like that at the time? Um, trying to think. It was all the time. Stuff like that would, would happen all the time. But just like, you know, little one, little things. And it was just it was just a constant that first my first season there was just just amazing. Like some of the characters that were in that in that tri- yeah. in that change of me was unbelievable. And then Charlie Outway as well. Oh, yeah. Jazz, was, Jazz was probably the worst, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Can, I, bet. <laughs> I, I can only imagine. Um, now, now this one is a, is a big hot topic, I suppose, and this comes from David SH, and I'm not going to say the rest because there's just yeah, a lot of shoe, numbers. Shoe uh, yeah. yeah, David Yeah, David Shoe. Um, so this is the this is the, the, the big one. Will, uh, what happened in the Palace changing room before the playoff second <laughs> leg at the Amex? Can you shed any light on on uh, on Pugate? Well, that's that's what I'm say- I said before, didn't I? I think the fans know know more than we actually know. <laughs> it was just kind of, it was funny because on the actual game day, going out playing it, we we didn't know anything that had happened. I didn't, well, I didn't. Whether I was just oblivious and just in the zone, whether any of the other lads did, I don't know. But I I certainly did, and it was just another game. And then obviously it all came to light after. Yeah. Mm. The st- I think the story was some. It was like some. Their coach driver or something. He was a coach driver, uh, yeah. Who, who didn't Apparently, make it to yeah. the toilet and then tried cleaning it up himself. <laughs> God knows how true that is, but yeah. <laughs> Because the rumour was like it was Charlie Oakley. Well, it, was a lot, it was very smelly, apparently. <laughs> Jesus. And that's, and that's how we lost. That, yeah. Unbelievable, isn't it? Because of a coach uh, driver that couldn't hold it in. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, but that, about, the rumour was that it was Charlie uh, Oakway. That was what I believed for a long, that's long time. That's what the Brighton rumour was, wasn't it? That was the surely, yeah, fan I'm, I'm thinking surely, it could, yeah, surely it couldn't have been. But then you think no, of think Chaz it, and some of the things he does. <laughs> then you think, I don't know, <laughs> could you game. imagine? <laughs> could you imagine? Yeah. Oh, oh, you know, well, someone that, knows that coach driver. That coach driver set our fate in the playoffs. That was at least, <laughs> yeah. apparently, yeah, because apparently they used that as as a like a boost, being like, look, this is yeah. what they think of us. Then yeah. let's show them on the pitch. I can't believe yeah. that's what. But yeah, you know, it worked crazy. For them somehow. Mm. Crazy, yeah. Um, and then, and then um, that we had. I think this has been sort of, you know, uh, asked a couple of times. But one of them was from Ben uh, Tavasoli, and um, he he asked, "Who's the best Brighton player that you played with?" We obviously asked the best trainer and, and the worst trainer, but who's actually the the best player um, that you you played with at Brighton? And, and well, also, yeah, can we ask? Can we ask worst? <laughs> and I, I know you probably don't yeah. want to answer that. Worst. But can we ask the well, worst? I think player? wisely before I answer the worst one because I think it's a bit yeah. tight. But. Um... No, Vicente was obviously. Well, he said there's a lot. Vicente got narrowed yeah. it down. He got narrowed it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, Vicente was obviously the best, um, yeah. probably by far. But then there was, just, I was thinking about that before. There was kind of Wayne Bridge who came, and he was oh, yeah, like, he was the, he was on another level as well, unreal. and he was probably yeah. coming towards kind of the end of his career after some injuries as well. So, you know, God knows how good he was. Um, but even like players like um, Joa. You know, he was unbelievable and then obviously went on to, to win the Premier League and kind of do stuff yeah, like that. Right. But Bruno, Bruno was obviously still is a legend there and yeah. you could tell how good, he, how good he was and must have been at kind of Valencia again. So, you know, I was lucky enough to play with some some really, really top players and kind of That's ones that had done it. How did that team not get promoted? How did that team not yeah. 
get. I don't even because know. Because of a poo, mate. Because of poo gate. That's, that's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mm. I mean, Will, would it's you say reason. that is the best? <laughs> would you say that's the best quality team you've played in? Would you say? I mean, some of the names we're talking about are, are joke. Yeah, I think up there, obviously, yeah, obviously moving to to the Premier League and making that step up to Sunderland. But I think as a, as a squad overall, that was close to yeah to to the Sunderland squad easily. Yeah, so mm. I think even you know Matthew Upson obviously played for England so many times. So there was players in there that, and I think we was all the good thing about it was all kind of at our, probably our peaks of our careers in a way. Obviously, kind of like them, them players were kind of coming on the way down, but then it was like Orlandi, Lopez, you know, Dean Hammond, kind of Barnsley. Um, Kazenga was, was unbelievable at that time as well. So I think we just had a, a really good squad and players that were playing yeah. probably at the best football, playing the best yeah. football of their careers, really. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, and um, this is a really, really random one um, from um, BHA Harvey. This is really random. We don't even know if you, if you like this one, but he's asked, he's asked, what's your favourite F1 driver? <laughs> they love their Do F1, watch... don't they? That is one. very random. <laughs> well, that I only know really... Lewis Hamilton. She's got me Hamilton. <laughs> and he, and he's <laughs> British, so. You're going you're to get slated for that because I'm pretty sure they slander Hamilton on Twitter every Sunday. Yeah, they don't uh, like him, do they? I'll tell you why. Such actually, such which is weird. I, I don't know why. I quite like this one actually, uh, from Jay Ridgeway. I think I'm saying that right. Um, yeah. Who was the most underappreciated player you played with? That's quite. I, I quite like that one, to be fair. Yeah. Mm. You kind of touch on Marcus Painter, but because you said that he was yeah, under- that's a good fans, point. Yeah, well, apart, him, from, uh, apart from Painter, yeah, he did mention him earlier. Probably say, I mean, Brid, kind of Bridcut because his position, but I suppose people knew Bridcut was yeah. really good and important yeah. to the team. Um, he was quality. Usually, was them defensive, mid, them defensive midfielders are the kind of the grafters in it. Barnsley, yeah. Barnsley was, I mean, yeah. some, sometimes Barnsley got a lot of stick off Brighton fans, but a lot of the probably. Fifty percent of his career at Brighton, he was playing out of position. You know, he'd come come in off the left hand side, wasn't he? So probably naturally, when he he was kind of asked to run with the ball or something, he looked a bit, bit. He wasn't you know as good as he was. But when he played up front, his goal record was unbelievable, uh, mm-hmm. and obviously okay. gone on to to do to do really well at Burnley. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, probably Barnes, I think. Um, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, well, talk, talking actually Barnes. <laughs> Yeah, talking to Ashley Barnes, is he your best? Was he your best mate at the time at the club? Because, um, yeah, I saw a picture of you two enjoying a bit of food together back in like 2012, like just a random, <laughs> ran, random picture. Um, yeah, yeah, well, yeah what, I got on well with Barnsley, to be fair, yeah. Yeah. Was it, was think, he, would you say he was your best mate? Or Yeah, I suppose, yeah, at Brighton, yeah, I think. But I think as, as, a, as a, a group of players, we kind of went out quite a lot, you know, for, for mm. team meals and kind of bonded and stuff, so... It was, I was kind of close with with quite a lot of the players. Um, Adam Alab was Adam Alab was funny as well. He he was brilliant and obviously a legend. Um, and he, he kind you of get one him of on the pod. That, if you're still in contact yeah, with Adam, do. please please drop him a yeah. message. Will we yeah, need to get him? To him. On, so. The I stories that he'd boy. probably come out with are hilarious. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll have to delete half the pod though when she finished. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't, can't well, really show that. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there is there any of them that you actually still keep in contact with? I mean, do you talk to many of them still? Is there anyone from the club, even backroom staff, or everyone sort of gone their own way? Yeah, yeah, obviously not, kind of not day to day, but um, yeah. Gordon Gray every now and again, Crofty, who's obviously doing the twenty threes, Gary Dicker, who's just gone back to twenty threes as well, um, Barnsley, yeah, kind still of, playing, yeah, play, go out with Barnsley <laughs> every now and again, but yeah, I've, I kind of keep in contact with a, of a lot of the players because yeah. like. That was just a, such a good time and a, and a good kind of close knit group that we had. Really, yeah. Agreed. Did you give uh, send Gary Dicker any uh, any stick for getting sent off recently for the under twenty three? <laughs> oh, I know, I missed that one. Did he get sent off? Yeah, yeah he, he got, got sent off the under twenty three. So embarrassing. In the EFL trophy, he got sent off. <laughs> That's brilliant. No, <laughs> to about that. Yeah, he, he probably flattered him as well. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, Dick yeah. Hicks, he was again was was so funny as well, and he he was kind of a bit of a joke as well. He. He, he was funny he just kind of come out that had a random 17 year old the other ones, week but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> probably... <laughs> no prisoners <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no prisoner. And, and just, just a quick one um, for for anyone who's who's, who's listening or watching, uh, Michael, Michael, you're based in uh, Bolton at the moment, aren't you? Will you're living in Bolton? Yeah, 
Yeah. Well, what, what, what's the, what's the comparison? Obviously, just from a, from a sort of life <laughs> aspect, living in Brighton. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not trying. It's not a loaded question. I'm There's levels. levels. <laughs> There's levels. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trick question, this, isn't it? No, no, no. It's not. It's not. It's not. Yeah, Bol- Bolton's <laughs> brilliant. It's miles better than Brighton. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. That, that answers. My, I was going to ask. Yeah. What was like? You know, what was it like living in Brighton in comparison to Bolton? Or what was just life yeah. in general like living in Brighton? What, did you enjoy living in Brighton by the sea? And yeah, I lo- yeah. I loved it to be fair well i live just outside like burgess hill hayward teeth um uh, but yeah me. i was kind of yeah everybody <laughs> everybody sticks. loved coming down anyway that show all my family always wanted to come down my mates and everything mm. it was it was just a, yeah it was a brilliant time to play for brighton as well at that time i think with everything that was going on and you know it is gorgeous I and mean, he has obviously got a, a good reputation it and it is it is a, it is a nice place so yeah. i enjoyed Sli- it Bol- bolton slightly better then yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Northern's going to say that, isn't he? Of course he is. He's not going to say that. Yeah. Like yeah. Northern or Anna. Northern. Yeah, yeah exactly. Amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, boys, um, have we got any further questions for for, for Will before oh, we wrap good, up? Yeah. Or? Good. It's a good podcast. Um, yeah. Does he know what a, was it a smack bomb pee wet? What's the oh, law of yeah. Yeah. Good question. Uh, a wig and a wig and kebab. A wig and kebab. Uh, Basically, yeah. We, we, shout out to Joe you Gilmore. So one of our, well, yeah, one of our guests. Basically, um, we, we had before Joe Gilmore. He he went viral basically for doing a video. He went and had something called the Wigan Kebab. Now I'm just googling it because uh, oh, yeah, it's attacking a bun. So it's basically. basically it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, so it's a buttered bar, uh, balm cake, right, yeah. with meat and potato slapped in the middle of. An, so basically, it's a pie within bread, yeah. essentially. Um, would you, have you heard of that? Because I think it's a northern thing. Is that something you're the aware only, of? Yeah, but you know what? My my best mate's dad calls it a builder's butty because he's Scottish. Oh. So that's right. that's another one I've heard, but I've never had one of them. It's a bit random. There's one it? that you like pour pea juice, not peas, like mushy peas. You pour like the pea juice <laughs> on it. What was that? As, that, that's as a smack gravy. bomb pea wet, as, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a smack bomb pea wet. Yeah. Yeah. And one random thing, actually, when I did live in Brighton, I went to a chippy once and they didn't sell gravy. So that was a bit uh, random. I bet you. I bet you're <laughs> raging. That's a northern I bet you're yeah, raging. Bob Roll here's fuming. Like, Absolutely fuming. Like, that's, that's, that's why he left. That's why he left to go to Sunderland. Yeah, yeah. It was after three years, and I thought, I'll go chip it out. I'm off. I'm out of here. <laughs> Five pound eighty pints in Brighton. Two no, pound pints in Bolton. I know yeah. where I'm going. No gravy. <laughs> Oh, brilliant! Um, that's brilliant. Oh well, listen, Will. Well, way to round that off. That's pleasure. Like Will. Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. yeah you, you've been an absolute pleasure. We really enjoyed uh, enjoyed you having it on. Just, just quickly uh, for everyone listening, uh, please do make sure you do like, comment, and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. And of course, um, yeah, keep keep streaming on Apple, or Spotify, and of course, Will. Um, we'll, we'll drop all your sort of uh, contacts as well. So if anyone's watching that, you know, is you know interested in getting involved with 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 what you do, or even players that are watching this, you know, if there's any young players yeah. that are interested to, to be picked up, we will obviously we'll leave all your details in the in the description as well um so yeah make sure you hit up will um for anything to do with that as well um so i'm sure i'm sure you'd be happy to help when you will yeah perfect yeah like i always say kind of i'd love to get to get back down there and if i ever represented any players that'd be unbelievable i think that'd be yeah kind of a great, Amazing, great yeah. thing so, so yeah, we have we have got a few a few of the youth players that watch this i believe so um yeah, we'll yeah. This, yeah. if you're looking for a new agent here will you'll get your dream dream move to sunderland lads you'll be like the guy that owns wolves who's just the agent who just gets every single player on, on his book just play for bolton everyone's going to bolton <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take it over <laughs> uh, well yeah That's absolute so pleasure um, we hope everyone listening and watching has enjoyed it um, and yeah and we shall see you next week peace peace